we have a uh, young, very active, athletic 42-year-old with uh, discogenic low back pain and uh, left lower extremity radiculitis. He's been uh, struggling with uh, this pain, has tried a variety of non-operative treatments. He's also tried lots of exercise and that has not worked. And um, he was considering a fusion surgery. So instead, we did a targeted injection at the left L4-5 and L5-S1 uh, through a transformal approach containing anesthetic and he got 90% pain relief, but it was only temporary. He's got an annular tear at 4-5, spondylosis at 5-1. So rather than doing a massive surgery like a fusion, we've decided to go in and do a uh, transforaminal endoscopic uh, annuloplasty, releasing the nerve, removing entrapped disc fragments there. Uh, and same thing here uh, along at L5-S1. The nerve is usually tethered down um, as part of the healing process because of the inflammatory process of healing. And our, our goal is to release the nerve and try to initiate a more normal healing response by removing these little annular tears that basically perpetuate this chronic inflammatory process and cause chronic pain and disability. So uh, we'll be able to do this through uh, one poke hole, even though it's two separate uh, trajectories, put a little Band-Aid and a rapid recovery, and we're all hoping that he gets a great result. Chromatodiscogram here, shot and save. Looking for a leak out the back, shot and save. There it is, right there, shot and save. That's the annular tear, shot and save, like that. All right, this is part of the tenet of minimal invasive surgery, serial dilation. Instead of ripping everything apart, you just make it slowly bigger and bigger by using these what we call cannulas or dilators, or I guess straws. So we just uh, slowly dilate open instead of rip open. Large pie hit last night. Oh. <laughs> I still eat it, eat it over and over again. Alrighty, so you can feel around and tell, first of all, this disc is way too bouncy and incompetent supposed to be really firm and then there's a hole right there. That's probably where the annular tear is and there's probably a bunch of blue fragments trapped inside there. So I'm going to just start reaching in there and grabbing stuff. Alrighty, you can just feel the loose pieces in here. I rely a lot and that's our neuromonitoring physician. And he's telling me when there's activity we're also looking at his butt cheek for any spontaneous firing. But it feels really good. I can just feel what's in there. I also use x-ray to check how far across I am. That feels really good. All righty, so when I first got in here, I could not pass this cannula into the canal. Now I can get it in there easily. There's a little bump right there, but I can move it all back and forth. That also tells me that the nerve is free because whenever you have a disc bulge, annular tear, and the body tries to repair it through the inflammatory process, like always, it will stick the nerve down. X-ray? Oh yes, going right around the pedicle as, all, as I expected. Shot. Easily get right to the middle. Shot. Shot. There's a little flap right there. Shot. Oh yes, so this little flap needs to go and then we're done with this level anyway. At the next level, the first level went really well. Shot. Shot. I got in here easily too. There it is. Shot and save. Here's the and there's Dr. Asimov telling me that the nerve is firing. Very irritable. Shot and save. Looking for a leak out the back. I can see it, but it's, it doesn't have a big hole. Good. Shot. 
And this reaming part, when I show other surgeons, they freak. They're like, you're going you're gonna to do what with that thing? Large burst on the left. Whenever I can avoid this reaming, I do, because every time I ream, that's the greatest amount of danger. Because just think about it, like look at the end of this thing. If it even scratches the side, it'll irritate the exiting nerve root. So you gotta be so careful, you gotta use your pinky out, delicate Asian fingers. Yeah, look at that. Shot. I'm looking for that tear. Yep. Not only that, but the tear also lets the electricity conduct. All right. I was thinking this, this level doesn't look that bad, but I take that completely back now. There's the... Little bump right there, shot. No, can you move that? Um, never mind. Nope. Yeah, there's something right there. Stuck. Shot. Oh yeah. Case went beautifully. I was able to do both levels through that one incision. It's really small. It's tiny. It's really just a poke hole. Put a little bit of skin glue on it and a band-aid and get you back on the road to recovery and getting back to life as we know it. It's perfect time since it looks like things are opening up. So best wishes on a speedy recovery. We're all rooting for you. Here's the radiographic summary of the procedure. I start out by making sure that the patient's perfectly AP relative to the floor at the level that I'm operating on. And then the C-arm comes into the... Uh, under the table lateral position. And then I start at uh, one of the levels, four or five is usually a good one. And I'm taking the skinny initial dilator and making my way down to the working triangle. I inject the skinny 22 gauge needle and do a chromatodiscogram and look for the leakage at the back. And you can see that right here. Because in a normal disc, all the dyes should be contained in the middle and it should look like a hamburger with two buns in a patty. I serially dilate that opening, put in the endoscope, use the various ball tip feelers and probes to make sure I know where I am and that everything's clear. And then same thing on the L5-S1 level. Because of the angulation, you can get to both L4-5 and L5-S1 through a single stab incision by angling the trajectory. You can see the serial dilators and the re external reamers. And then using the ball tip probe to make sure I know where I am. Surgery went very well, so we're all excited about getting him back to his busy lifestyle again.